like should I volunteer my first year? How many courses I should take? Not that many upper years get into medical school, so the application cycle does take a while. Hello, my name is Alice and I am a second year Canadian medical student and in this video I wanted to cover what I wish I knew before entering my first year of York University. Um, and specifically, this is kind of advice for pre-meds who are entering the life sciences majors, whether it be bio, biomed, biochem, what I wish I knew, tips, some frequently asked questions, all that good stuff. I'm in my second year at UBC and I completed my bio degree in 2023, graduated after four years. Before I get into this video, I put together um, a series of many, many videos that go in depth onto all the topics, basically sharing my advice to York Uni students. The course is called How to Get into Medical School in Canada, but the York University edition. And the reason why I made this course is because I felt like there wasn't a lot of information specific to York Uni students. Not that many upper years get into medical school. And I feel like there's just a culture of like, oh, you know, hush hush, keeping things secret, gate keeping certain information. So I just wanted to put it all down into 15 plus videos that go into depth from when to take your MCAT to what first year courses to take, second year, third year, how to stand out, volunteering, when you should apply, research at York, and just advice for all York Uni students who want to get into medical school. So please check that out. The link will be in my description. And in this video, I wanted to cover the frequently asked questions and just like the main points that I wish I knew before going into my first year of medical school, before applying to medical school, just as a York Uni student, as a York Uni pre-med, what I wish I heard from a mentor or anything like that. So let's jump right in. So the first question is going into your first year, how many courses I should take? So I always recommend students to take a full course load. That way it'll create less problems down the line because some medical schools do want um, students to take a full course load so that way their GPA is correctly weighted. Otherwise, schools like Western, for example, may only consider the years that you've taken a full course load in and use that to calculate your GPA. Some schools are, like UFT are moving away from requiring their students to take a full course load to drop your lowest grades as it was in the past. Now schools are like UFT are doing an adjusted GPA. So basically they're allowing students to not take a full course load in certain years, but then calculating your GPA differently. So definitely I would say if you can, based on all your other circumstances and commitments, but if you're keen on going into med school, take a full course load in your first year and use that time to adjust to all the courses that you're taking like math, uh, physics, biology, psychology, um, chemistry, whatever it may be. Use that time to really adjust to your first year, get a good GPA. I always recommend students to meet with their advisors to see what courses best fit into their schedule um, from, from York Uni, but then I also cover like the all the courses that I took in my first year and throughout all my years of undergrad in my course on how to get into medical school in Canada, but the York University edition, basically all the topics um, around course taking, course selection, GPA, all that is covered in my course. In terms of volunteering, so this is a good question, like should I volunteer my first year? If you're just going into your first year of studies, I would say make studying and make getting a high GPA your number one priority because GPA is truly king. There are so many things that you can change about your application. You can write down different volunteering experiences down later down the line, but your GPA is something that a lot of applicants struggle with because it's really not flexible unless you take more courses, unless you do another year, which you know, complicates things in someone's medical school journey. So I would say in your first year, prioritize A, getting a good GPA, and B, making friends. Go to social events, you know, make connections with people who may also be applying to medical school, who are also kind of like-minded, who you could potentially start clubs with later down the line. Um, who you can join clubs with, just hear about certain opportunities, form study groups. So these are all great ways to socialize and kind of set yourself up for success in your second, third, and fourth years. In terms of volunteering though, I would say start with one to two light commitments and then at the end of your first year, think about adding more on. 
based on what your availability is like and just feel like your stress levels. Can you afford more volunteer position? Can you afford to spread yourself a little bit more thin? But yeah, I just want to warn you, don't take on a million volunteer opportunities in your first year because you are going to burn out and your GPA is going to suffer. Yeah, so in terms of when to take the MCAT, I would say if you are again super keen on getting into med school as soon as possible, I took my MCAT after my second year and I took my MCAT after my third year. So I took the MCAT twice and most people do take it twice. So kind of plan that in your journey. The reason why I took it after second year is so I could apply in my third year. So if you are, you know, interested in getting into med school ASAP, try and uh, take it after the summer of your second year. Usually around three to four months is more than enough to study. I feel like a whole year to study would be overkill, but three months of just consistent kind of full-time studying should do it thinking about med school later down the line, you're not in a rush, then you can take it in the summer of your third or the summer after your fourth year. My, the average of my med school class, the incoming age, is around 24, 25 years old. So there's absolutely no rush to get into medical school. And in fact, maybe getting into medical school, medical school a bit later may have may give you some time to do some self-development, to pick up some extracurriculars that really shape who you are, do some research. So these are all things to consider when you're thinking about, okay, when do I take my MCAT? In terms of how to stand out in a medical school application, you really have to think about what makes you you. Like what makes, what are some quirky things about you? Is it a cultural, um, you know, con connection that you have? Are you an immigrant? Do you help people from underserved populations? Do you like to mentor people, like teach people? Um, do you have certain hobbies like gardening or maybe um, enjoying like certain sport activities? So try and capture that in your application because medical schools want people from diverse backgrounds. So people who can relate to different types of people in Canada and I think there's room for every type of interest. There is no one correct f way to get into medical school, although there are certain soft prerequisites that you kind of, you know, most students have, which I go into more detail in my course. In terms of when you should apply, I think I already covered it, but basically, yeah, after your second or third year, you should uh, apply. Keep in mind that the application process takes one year long. So say the applications are due in October-ish for Ontario, and then you have the three months before that, um, you're studying in the summer for your MCAT, and then after that, you're taking things like doing the CASPER exam or uh, like for UBC, getting reference letters and then in, in the winter slash springtime you're interviewing and then in May you'll find out whether or not you get accepted. So just keep in mind that the application cycle does take a while but also try not to rush into things if you feel like you're not ready. It is always good to apply as soon as possible because you get that practice experience, you get that feedback based on whether or not you were interviewed versus you know put on wait lists. It's kind of like fishing so you put your um, your hook in the water by applying and then if based on certain in rejections or certain um, interview invites you can see okay how, how am I performing. In terms of Another frequently asked question is research at York. This is like a, a multi-layered question. So um, if you're heading into your first year, you should think about potentially starting a research position um, just to see whether or not you like research, to see how things go. It's also a good way to get paid during your summer. So York has amazing opportunities. Um, things like NSERC, right? It's like a, it's a four month paid summer internship at a research lab at York University. And in my course, I also provide like a detailed list of all these different opportunities um, at, at different hospitals, at different institutions, where you can perhaps get more clinical research. Um, whereas at York, it's more like wet lab, non-clinical, right? There's not doctors at York, whereas um, in other opportunities, like at hospitals, there's different doctors who can become your mentors down the line. So these are all like things to consider and things that I go in much more detail in my course. In terms of advice for first year bio students in particular, because I once was a first year bio student, so I fully get how overwhelming and just like crazy a first year can be. 
focus on your grades in your first year focus on socializing right like you want to really like make those lifelong connections where you can help each other up keep each other accountable introduce each other to new opportunities and just like have a good time like genuinely enjoy your undergrad experience because it's a time like no other i feel like if you just spend your time like studying 24 7 you're really going to be miserable keep an open mind in terms of perhaps maybe the experiences or like the the careers that you have open for you so i feel like most people going into medical school or like going into their first year pre-meds may just only have like one specific vision for their life okay i'm gonna get in med school at this time i'm gonna become this specialty but really you know life throws you many curveballs curveballs your life is not Life is not a straight path, right? Like there may be obstacles down the line and it's really about like persevering through that. I feel like first year is one of those obstacles transitioning from high school into university. There's just a lot that could go wrong, right? Like stress, don't neglect your health, don't neglect your physical, mental health. Keep your spirits lifted high even through tough times because I'm, let me tell you like that, those experiences, those challenges really build grit and you may not realize it now, but eventually down the line, it will help you become a better doctor or get involved in different career exploration opportunities. For example, there was a program at York called Caf Coffee with a Mentor or something like that. And I met with somebody who was a kind of a product manager. She had a PhD and it was a pharmaceutical company in the US where she was in charge of managing the advertising for this these cancer drugs. So it was really cool to be able to meet with her one on one and just like kind of think about a career that I've actually never considered before and just yeah keep an open mind to the different connections and opportunities that may come your way. Take an active approach into discovering different careers, things like things that may be even surrounding healthcare like occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech language pathology, right? nursing, all these allied health professionals that may also fit like your fit your goals and may not be as a demanding of career. I know there's a lot of pressure to um, succeed in these very first years of undergrad. There is no time like the present to just live your life, enjoy like your uni years and you'll make memories that you'll look back fondly of. That was pretty much the advice for incoming students to York University. Like I mentioned, my I recorded a course this summer and I put a lot of effort into it just to make it super thorough, make it kind of like your big sister advice for people who are pre-meds at York and I really hope that you uh, check it out and you find it useful. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.